What's up, guys? Welcome back to King Kraken Sports. Mike here. And I'm, one, still probably in a food coma from all that really good food yesterday for the Super Bowl. And speaking of the Super Bowl, before I get into today's video, I just want to take a moment to say congratulations to the New England Patriots, to Belichick, to Brady, and for all of us for actually being able to watch the greatest Super Bowl game ever. Uh, I've been watching the NFL for 14 years now. And I've never seen a better game than that. That was by far the best ever. Especially considering uh, going into the fourth quarter, I was on my phone. I was bored. I thought that game was over. Kind of just wanted it to end already. And, well, <laughs> there's a reason I picked the Patriots. So let's, let's just say that. Uh, but, yeah, food coma and all. We're going to get through to today's video. You know why you're here. First day of the NFL offseason is today, which means mock drafts can become official. Yes, no more speculation on as to where a team is going to finish in the season. We already know. As usual, guys, all 32 teams down below, well, all 32 picks, because there's only 30 teams picking in this uh, first round, but all the picks are going to be down below. This is uh, just me going through, probably given the fact that it's the day after the Super Bowl, Given the fact that it's the first mock draft of the season and every uh, of the off season, we're gonna go with seven teams. Usually, I go with about three to five. We're going with seven today. That's right. So first off, we're gonna go third overall. Chicago Bears selecting Marshawn Lattimore, the cornerback out of Ohio State. Now, yes, Chicago does need a quarterback. Jay Cutler is going to be gone, and that doesn't make anyone in Chicago feel very happy that Matt Barkley is going to be your starter right now. But with Trubisky off the board at two, you don't reach. You don't reach. San Francisco already has to reach to get Trubisky, so don't reach for the second best quarterback at three. Don't do it. Now, why Lattimore? Yes, Jonathan Allen makes a ton of sense. Yes, Reuben Foster makes sense. They could get another edge rusher. There, there are a lot of needs on Chicago. Uh, especially if Alshon Jeffrey is gone, because then they're going to need a wide receiver as well. Lattimore is actually my number two cornerback. Uh, he's 11th overall on my board, I believe. Uh, but I have him going here because Chicago's got nothing in the secondary. Uh, this was a toss-up for me between either Jamal Adams, the safety out of LSU, or Lattimore. And I picked the corner because... They've they've got nothing at corner. Uh, I don't even know who their second string corner is, and their first string corner is Kyle Fuller. Yeah, that ain't good. Uh, so yeah, Lattimore, uh, he's got a lot of upside being a, a very young entrant, and he may actually be probably by the draft season he might actually be my number one corner. So he's gotten a lot of love in the media. It works. He fits a huge need. Uh, moving on. Number six, Leonard Fournette to the Jets. I think I'm just going to keep riding this one till it happens. Um, I'm pretty sure I had him at six in my last mock draft as well. Uh, Fournette is an absolute beast. Matt Forte is old. Bilal Powell is okay, but not very good. There is not a quarterback there for the Jets to take, nor should they take one, because what the fuck do you do with the other quarterbacks you've taken in the first you know, two rounds? Uh, so, yeah, you know what? Best way you can help a quarterback like Bryce Petty or Christian Hackenberg or whoever the fuck is starting under center uh, for the Jets next year is to actually give them a running game. Uh, they didn't really have that last year. Forte is, at this point, uh, he, he's, he's in his 30s, guys. He, he's not going to turn back the clock anytime soon. You get Fournette, who can be a bright spot uh, going forward and might actually be able to build a ground and pound type of attack with him. Number 10, Deshaun Kaiser out of Buffalo. Or out of Notre Dame going to Buffalo, sorry. Kaiser is actually my number three quarterback, but I have a feeling he's going to go before the third quarterback in this draft. Um... It comes down to his size, guys. He's 6'4", he's 230, he's athletic, he can throw. 
Buffalo needs a quarterback because it doesn't look like Tyrod's going to come back. It, it Buffalo's looking kind of rough, guys, and I, I wanted to give them a wide receiver. I almost gave them Corey Davis. But if they're not going to bring back Tyrod, they need a quarterback, and Deshaun Kaiser was what made sense. He seemed like a bigger improvement over EJ Manuel, and he can kind of learn the playbook a bit from... Uh, actually, that doesn't make sense. It's a new coach. Um, he can compete with EJ Manuel right away, and they still have two very similar uh, quarterbacks as far as style. All right, so there's the third one down. How about Indianapolis at 14? Dalvin Cook. Uh, Frank Gore is about 428 years old, give or take. And uh, as great as it is that someone of his age is still having a decent season uh, year to year, they got to get younger at the position. They've got no-name running backs behind him. And that's one of the reasons Luck has to throw the ball so fucking much to receivers that aren't great. But uh, he needs a running game to help balance out that offense. They've helped protect him a little bit with the offensive line. The receivers, they've got a ton of weapons, but none of them are really all that great outside of T.Y. Hilton. Dante Moncrief can't stay healthy. So, again, another team I almost gave Corey Davis, but that wouldn't make sense because they've invested so much. <sighs> Uh, but yeah, Dalvin Cook is my fifth overall player. Uh, he's one spot below Fournette on my big board. Uh, Fournette's fourth. And uh, yeah, if he's still there at 14, you gotta take him. Looking for another uh, big surprise pick here. 19, Derek Barnett, uh, the defensive end out of Tennessee. He's fallen a bit. Uh, in my rankings, because I really don't think he's a true edge defender. And what I mean by that is he, I'm not sure if he can play 3-4 outside linebacker. It's kind of the same concern I had um, with Joey Bosa last year, whether or not they could play outside. Of, now, Joey Bosa became a 3-4 defensive end, and a goddamn good one at that. Uh, but, like, Barnett's not that size, he's not that fast, he's not that twitchy, he's not that explosive, it's all snap anticipation, and I'm not sure if that's going to work out as well for him in the next level, but I gave him to Tampa Bay at 19 because I think one of the underrated needs for this team that no one really talks about is their need for an edge rusher, man. They're so weak. They've got uh, no expense and nothing else. And they need to get to the quarterback, especially when you've got Breeze, Ryan, and Cam in your division that you got to face three times a year. So that's four? That's one, two, three, four, five. All right, so two more, guys. Sorry about that. Two more picks for you. How about uh, Oakland, number 24, picking Jabril Peppers. Listen, guys, I hate to burst some of your bubbles, but Jabril Peppers isn't going to go top 10 in this draft. Some people don't even think he's going to go round one. I just think he's an explosive enough playmaker that someone in the NFL will be able to find a spot for him to play consistently, and they can work with him on that. And goddamn, it's got to be the Oakland Raiders, because look at how the Raiders have drafted the last couple of years. They find just playmakers. They find really good players. Gabe Jackson, Khalil Mack, uh, uh, Carr, Amari Cooper. Like, the list goes on and on and on. Carl Joseph last year. Plus, pairing Carl Joseph with, with Jabril Peppers, good luck. Joseph's got great ball skills and can lay you out, and Jabril Peppers is bound to make a couple of plays in some facet on defense. There you go. You have solidified an even an already good defense into potentially one of the league's better defenses if you get peppers. And last one. How about we finish it off with the New England Patriots, uh, the 32nd pick, and Tim Williams. Now, he has had the most up-and-down season I think I've ever seen as far as draft stock. Um, not just for me, but just in the consensus of the media. Uh, started the year uh, in a round where I had him on a lot of people's boards at like 15 to 20, and then he kind of went down a bit, and then he went up a bit. 
Uh, I kind of... He, his max for me during the regular season was, I believe, about 14th on my board. I saw him as high as 5th on some people's. And I got a little freaked out by that because he has not a lot of size. He's only about 240. Can't really play in an end at that size. And he's not really good against the run either, so he'd be kind of a pass rush specialist. And then it came out that he's actually got a drug problem. He's got a drug problem, and he's got a weapons charge against him. So that's going to uh, drop his draft stock a bit. But you know Bill. Bill's just going to pick the best player available. And if Tim Williams is there at 32, he's going to take him. So this was a little bit of a longer video, guys. But of course, seven picks for the first offseason mock draft of the year. There's going to be some more. Don't you worry. There's going to be some uh, new positional videos coming out soon. Um... Yeah, guys, so that's going to do it for today. As always, like, comment, subscribe. If you have a mock draft, share that thing down below. I'd love to see what you guys think. As always, guys, tell a friend, tell a friend to tell another friend, and I'll see you again soon.